hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're building an instrument case. Well, it wasn't that long ago on the show that we built this little beauty. And it's been sitting on its stand in the corner ever since, and every once in a while I'll grab it and I'll play a couple tunes and I'll put it off to the side again. But I think it's time to make a case for it to protect it. I have an idea of what I want to do for the case, and it'll basically be a plain plywood case because I'm hoping to do some wood burning on it a little later on. So let's just take this uke over to the bench and see how big we want to make the, the case for it. Well, I just want to look at the interior dimensions that we're going to need for this ukulele. And I want to leave a little bit of wiggle room on either side of the instrument. So if I make it nine inches interior dimension wide, that'll give a half an inch on either side. Um, that way, if I want to add a little foam later, I can do that. So nine inches wide interior dimension and our length 25 and a half, that will be a better fit. So interior dimensions of nine by 25 and a half. The next thing you want to do is calculate the, the width of the sides of your instrument case. So just measure the thickest point. Don't forget to include the strings and the bridge. It looks like two and a half would be an absolute tight, tight, tight fit. I don't want a tight, tight, tight fit. In fact, I want some room there, and as well, I want a little thicker case. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this one three and a half inches wide. So once you've established your measurements, you want to cut the wood for the outer box. And for that, we're going to be using half inch plywood and finger joints. So be sure that you add the thickness of your stock to each length. In other words, you will need your nine inches wide plus a half an inch on either side for your finger joints. So I'm gonna cut those pieces to length and then we'll move on to cutting the finger joints. Well, truth be told, I went with a four inch wide board. I have everything temporarily clamped together. Um, this is actually a little longer than it's going to be because I have the ends sitting on the outside here. I have our lengths on the inside of our width pieces to give us the proper width, because what I want to do is place some marks for some storage areas. And what I would like to do, this is wasted space here, here and here for this neck. So what I would like to do is get the uke roughly where I would like it to be, and then I'm going to be placing some square lines here to, um, to represent some dados that I need to cut in order to house some storage walls on the sides here. So I'm gonna get those two marked, and then we're gonna take them over to the table saw. Well, at this point now, we can cut our dados for our storage areas and those dados will be half an inch wide to accommodate our plywood. It's actually 15 30 seconds of an inch wide if you want to get technical, and we're going to cut a quarter inch deep dado. So for our longer side pieces, we can set a stop and cut both of our dados on the inside surface of our box. And for the two dados in our top section here, they will have to be individually uh, set up with the stop block and each one will be cut individually. If yours is one where your instrument sits right in the middle, well then you only have to set it up for one, set your stop for the proper distance and then flip it 180 degrees and cut your other dado. So we'll just get these two cut and then we can move on. Well, there's not much more that we can do with those dados for now until we get our finger joints done. Now, I don't need to do a video on how to do the finger joints. I'm going to be using the Incra iBox jig to do all of the corner joints. Uh, I do have a tutorial for that jig on the channel, so I will post a link to that. 
the finger joints are going to give this case an extreme amount of strength and that's what we really want should for some heaven forbid reason you drop the instrument uh, or drop the case those finger joints are going to really hold it together and protect your instrument inside and your case isn't going to fall apart so just make sure that your dados are exactly where you want them because you're not going to get a chance to cut them again after this and do the finger jointing and then i'll show you what we have at that point well, if you followed along and you did everything correctly and took your time, you should have a finger jointed box that looks like this. Nothing special at this point. But from here, I want to cut the top and the bottom of this. So you're going to want to take a measurement outside to outside and cut two pieces of half inch plywood that will coincide with those dimensions. Well, the reason I cut the case sides to be wider than what I initially had said was because I want these, uh, the top and the bottom of our instrument case to actually recess into this. So what I need to do is I need to take very specific measurements at the thickness of this plywood. And I believe it's 15, 30 seconds. And then I will cut a rabbit all the way around our piece here, 15, 30 seconds of an inch wide. The plywood is roughly half an inch and I'm going to leave about, I'm gonna say 3 16 of an inch left of the material to be able to glue to the top. But other than that, uh, I want the rest of it to be recessed down into the box and that will help several things. It will help strengthen our box as well as the finger joints, joints strengthening it, but as well it will help to keep the whole thing square during glue up. So I'm going to get that rabbit cut and then we're going to do a dry fit of our case. It's a little tight fit. There we go. There we go. And there is the top and bottom of our case. So what we can do at this point is give the thing a good sanding all the way around on the inside and outside surfaces, and then we're going to glue it together. Uh, but don't forget to take your uke out. So in order to glue this case together, I'm using Type Bond 3. Um, now, I'm not using it for its waterproof properties, which is what most people use Type Bond 3 for. Instead, I'm using it for its working time because uh, it dries a lot slower than what a normal wood glue would. So because of that, and because I'm using finger joints, I really want that extra working time. So just take your time, make sure your pieces are lined up, and glue together the carcass of your instrument case. And once you get all your clamps in place, you can just let it set up and dry completely. Um, there's really nothing we can do with it at this point until the whole thing is dried up. So let it dry up, and then I'll see you when that's done. Well, I would normally opt for just sanding our finger joints flush, but in this case, I thought I'd try something different and I've installed a three quarter inch diameter flush cut bit in the router table. So I'm gonna run it all around the case and trim off both the top edge overhang, which is just a tiny little bit on our case top and bottom, as well as our finger joints. Well, just as an FYI, that tr uh, flush trim bit worked absolutely amazing. So I will be putting that little tip in my arsenal and using it uh, in future box builds. First time I've ever done it and it worked really well. So it's now time to separate the lid from the case because while you have this nice case, I've given it a light sanding, you have no access. There's no lid, there's no case itself so you need to separate the case bottom from the lid and there's no formula there's no measurement you don't do it from the middle what determines 
the difference between the lid thickness and the body or the case is your hardware. So I have my latches here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up on my case in such a way so that I see how much room I need to mount these uh, latches. Um, if your hinges are large, you use your hinges. In this case, this is the largest piece that I have of hardware for this case. So that's what I need to use. So essentially, I'm going to center our latch here onto our case. And once I'm happy with how centered it is, I'm going to place a mark right where the top section of the latch and the bottom section meet. And then I just need to take a measurement from the end of the case down. So it looks like I need to cut the top of the case off at about an inch and a half. So my lid will be an inch and a half wide and the case itself is going to be two and three quarters minus the one eighth uh, thick kerf of the table saw blade. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our ends. So just double check to make sure that your fence is set correctly and that you are cutting correctly on the box and we're going to run through both end cuts. Now all I have done is made these little wedges and I've made them with scrap stock and the thinner piece is the thickness of the kerf of our saw blade. So all I'm going to do is insert these wedges or these little blocks here in place on our case and once we get them installed in both sides we're going to follow through with one of our long cuts. And once we get that cut done we'll insert another two of these wedges up top here we don't want to clamp these, we're just going to leave them in place. That's why the scrap wood was installed on these, because it prevents them from falling down through. And with that being done, we can follow through with our final cut to separate both lid and box. Well, the next thing that we need to do is make the box sections here for our storage areas and they as well will be finger jointed in the one corner so all I really need to do at this point is I need to measure from the bottom here all the way up to the top edge and then we're going to subtract half an inch from that and that will be the measurement for our storage area walls or sides so let me get those cut and finger jointed and I will show you how they go in and how I intend to, to finish them off. And with some careful measuring, you end up with something that looks like this, just like that. So what I'm going to do now is I need to glue these together. I'm gonna to glue them together first and then glue them where they go after I've sanded these flush. Um, they're a little small for a flush cut bit, so I'm not going that road. I'd rather use the sander and keep my fingers. Uh, as well, I'm going to go through the entire inside of the case. There's a few areas that have a little bit of squeeze out that's dripped on the inside of the cabinet here. And we're just going to use a chisel and very carefully trim that up and get rid of it. Well, the next three pieces of the build are custom for this instrument. So... I can't really tell you the measurements or how to do it or anything else. You have to do them for your own, but I will show you what I've done. I've cut a half inch piece of ply that's going to be the same length as what our case interior dimensions are wide. And I've cut out a hole for the strap button or a slot, I should say. And that just sits in the end like that. And that will get glued into place. I have also cut another piece of half inch ply and right here at the appropriate measurement for this instrument I have placed used a profile gauge taken the profile of the neck and I have made a cutout for it and that will get sat right here and as well I have also taken this scrap piece of walnut and I have cut out 
the top of the headstock. And what all three of these pieces do, once they're all glued in place, is they allow for your instrument to fit securely in there without shifting around. There is a little bit of play and that's to be expected, but you don't want it slopping back and forth, knocking it out of tune and that sort of thing. So we have it fully protected. And if I want later, I can add foam around the edges. It's all up to you for the interior. I don't care about it being plywood and walnut because the entire uh, interior of my case will be flocked. So it's all gonna blend into one eventually. But for now, I'm gonna glue in these three pieces in their appropriate areas, and then we can move on to the next step of the build. Now, while we're gluing in custom parts, I just want to fill in these areas here where the dados were not filled up by our compartments. So I've just cut some scraps of ply and I have cut them to the proper size for these holes and I'm just going to glue them in place, clean up the squeeze out and when they're dry we'll flush cut them to the case. And you want to do the same thing for the dados in the lid. Well at this point you're kind of at a standstill here because you need to decide what type of a finish you want to have on your instrument case. Um, for me, for the interior, I will be flocking the entire uh, inside of the case, both top and bottom. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was considering doing a wood burning on the outside, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. So, before we can carry on, you need to do your finish. You can cover it in material using spray adhesive on the surface and then carefully laying out and upholstering this. You can put foam on the inside to pad for your instrument. You can do whatever you like. Um, the sky's the limit here. Use your imagination. See what you can do. I'm going to do the finish on this and when everything is all said and done and dry and you know the deal, I'm going to come back and see you and we're going to carry on with the last few steps of the build at that point. Well, I am done the finish on my case and as you can see, I actually decided against a wood burning and what I've done is I have flocked both the inside and the outside of the case, red on the interior, black on the outside and it kind of gives the case that nice velvet sheen. I really like the way it turned out. Also, truth be told, uh, it's been three months since I made this case and since I got the finish applied. Uh, life kind of got in the way a little bit, no big deal. We're back. Now, what I need to do at this point is we want to make some covers for our storage areas. So what I have done is I've cut some custom pieces of cherry and we are going to fit these in place, trim them to make sure that they fit properly and nice and neat and all that kind of stuff. And once I get them fitting the way that I like, I'm going to be drilling in some washers on the one side of our board. And I want to put some rare earth magnets in a couple locations in the walls of the storage areas. That will hold our covers in place. So I used five minute epoxy to glue in the magnets and the washers on the lengths of cherry. One thing I will caution you with is if you are going to be using magnets, do not line up your magnet with the center of your washer because a magnet will not adhere to the hole. It will automatically try to shift your piece over to get onto solid metal. So you want the edge solid ring of the washers to line up with your magnets. With that done now, we're gonna leave this and let this set up. I don't wanna mess with it. And in the meantime, while we're waiting, I'm going to install the hardware. Now, this hardware that I'm installing is specific to my build uh, with protective corners, as well as the handle and the hinges. I will put the links to those below, but I don't think we need a video of how to screw hardware onto a case. So I'm gonna get that done and then I'll come back and I'll see ya. And with all the hardware now installed, we end up with something that looks like this. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It securely holds the instrument. These panels here are now held in place by the magnets 
all I really need to do at this point is I want to put a satin finish uh, varnish on each one of these covers. And with those rare earth magnets that will hold our cover securely in place and keep all of our accessories in either one of these sides. There you go. As easy as that, an instrument case. And there you have it, an instrument case. Guys, this project kind of morphed as it went along. It started off that it was going to be just a plain plywood case and then it turned into I was going to wood burn something and then I was going to flock the inside and then I decided I was going to flock it all. And you know what, honestly, that's what it's all about here in the shop is developing and adapting as you go. Um, especially for a project like this where I had absolutely no plans. I just kind of flew by the seat of my pants and did what sort of worked out for me. I'm quite pleased with the result and it's necessary as you go along in the process to change things up to make things work because there are going to be problems in a fly by the seat of your pants build that you do not foresee. So of course making changes as you go is, all, is what it's all about. That's the name of the game and honestly the results here are spectacular. I absolutely love the way this came out and it's going to be a great addition to my ukulele case arsenal. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This has been a lot of fun. I've had several requests for this show and uh, I finally managed to get it done. Now, truth be told, it actually took about three months. And the only reason for that is that after the case was made and all of the initial woodworking was done, I had other things that, you know what, I really wanted to work on. And uh, you know what, flocking the case wasn't my number one priority. I knew I had time to get it done. And as always, I wasn't in a rush. Either way, it was worth the wait. The results are fantastic. And I honestly hope you're gonna try it for yourself. Guys, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to stop by the channel and check out the show today. I hope you've enjoyed the content, and more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.